Hey gamers, it's Grind This Game here, back with Icarus. And this is going to be a guide to the Avalanche mission, which was the mission from hell. Um, we'll let the narrator uh, describe it first, though. UDA is under serious pressure to up their exotic shipments. They want Legos pushing into new zones, like yesterday. Places no one's been. Cold places. I ain't gonna lie to you. This one's about as risky as it comes. They'll be dropping some ice cutting gear down to you, but exotics screw with signals up there, so expect a mess and zero intel. But hey, at least you'll be the first. Maybe name something after yourself. So here's the loadout that I used basically a watering can. A module that makes you run faster, a basic knife, and a micro meal. So uh, jump right into it. You're headed deep into the Arctic on this one. Luckily, Legos dropped you some fancy ice cutting gear, because Group 15's last weapons test brought down half a mountain in your path. The bad news is the delivery drone got pasted by a storm. Crash zones marked on your map. Still, you came to Icarus for adventure, right? How's that going for you? So, uh, crash zone is not marked on the map. When I did this quest, it was full of bugs. It wasn't even completable on the main branch. I had to switch to the experimental branch. So hopefully it's been fixed in the main branch by the time you watch this, but if not, uh, you'll have to go into Steam and change over to the experimental branch. Uh, it does show the the cave entrance or blockage that you have to unblock with the laser. You have to go there first in order for the game to then show you where you need to go to get the laser. Just a minor point. You want to be level 30 for this uh, mission and be prepared to grind for many many hours to grind uh, the goal, copper, and various things you'll need. <laughs> to do this mission. Now I, I saw some patch notes for the patch that came out today. They've increased the gold spawn rate so maybe it won't be as bad for you guys but I did it before this patch. Um, before I guess people complain that it was just too long and too hard. It actually took me 12 and a half hours to do this mission. Um, but hopefully I can help, help, help you save some time showing you some tips where to settle, what to do, uh, what not to do. Uh, so we'll skip ahead here. First thing to note, um, there's certain ways you can't go to the uh, entrance to the ice biome. They've blocked it off so you get an out of bounds um, warning. So there's only kind of one way you can go. I'll show you guys which way that is. You're going to want fur armor when you go into the Arctic, but that doesn't come for a very long time because you need to farm a bunch of materials first. So if you try to go south from this area right there that I showed on the map, uh, you'll get an out of bounds issue. So you then have to head east instead. And that was grid D7, just so you guys know. So you want to head east instead of south. The hard bender actually shows up as a more solid line in the south that you can see on the map. It's, uh, it looks a little bit different than the regular outline. Okay, here I am spending the night in G6 grid. G7, uh, actually, spoiler alert, I'm going to give some cave locations if you don't want to know. Just skip ahead a few minutes, but uh, G7 has three caves, and G5, which is north of where I am, has one cave. And between those four caves, that was enough for me to get all the gold and copper that I needed, and steel and iron, uh, building all the way up. But here's some tips. You'll want the mining talents that give you a boost to mining output. And you don't want to mine the gold until you have your platinum pickaxe, because that'll increase the yield as well. So even though it'll be really tempting to mine it early on, don't do it. Uh, wait until you've got that platinum pickaxe. Eventually you'll reach the uh, ice wall area. which is, has its own kind of weather system. So it's basically, you're, you're getting into the ice biome. 
This is where you'll place that laser that you'll get later on. It is a pretty nasty area. There, When I went there, there was um, five or six ice, uh, snow wolves kind of waiting for me, as I'll show you in a sec here. This is where I ended up building my permanent base, on the forest side of this area. But in retrospect, I would have built my base in G7 by the three caves instead. It would have saved me a bit of running back and forth between the two places. So here's where I set up my base, uh, and it has a welcoming committee, of course. <laughs> uh, this bear didn't want to go to the front door to get chopped, he kept going to the back door. Anyway, eventually uh, I'm able to kill him before he kills me, barely. He wasn't cooperating. So yeah, there was a bear spawn kind of right on. There's bears all over the place, but there was a bear spawn pretty close to my where my base, where I ended up building my base, which was pretty close to the uh, ice wall. There it is, a million tons of ice and snow. Get that heat gun sorted and set up. Should slice right through that thing once you power it up. So when you first enter this uh, snowy biome, you'll get the narrator updating, and then when you get really close to the ice wall, he'll he'll talk again, and that's when it'll show on your map where to get the uh, get the laser, which I'll show you in a sec here. So here's where I am in the ice wall. North is where the uh, the package is. It's up on a rock face, so you might need to build up there to get there. So here's what the cliff face looks like, and it look you can see the burning satellite debris up top there. See, so you might there may be a way to walk up. I couldn't find a way, so I just built a few ramps to get up there. Um, pretty, I had to heal and stuff. I was pretty damaged. The vapor laser. Now you'll have to get rid of your backpack to this take it. Thing's kind of a heat ray. Hyper accelerated gas produces a resonant cascade, blah blah blah, something lasers. Larkwell cooked it up for group 15. Ought to cut right through any amount of ice and snow in your way though. And sure come in handy when you reach that avalanche. So head back to the uh, ice wall. And you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five, at least five snow wolves just waiting back by my base to welcome me home. <laughs> and if you make one of them mad, you make them all mad. Just a word of warning, giant packs of wolves spawn around this, uh, snowstorm area. You'll want to make fur, fur armor before you uh, venture on in here. Or at least before you get into the ice biome near the end. Now they're angry. Here they come. <laughs> Foiling my plans. Nice pile of wolves. Stab to the head, though. 
works wonders. So you'll see the ghost uh, blueprint here for the laser. Just plop that on top. Okay, so that thing's ready. Looks solid. Gear like this eats power. So you're gonna have to find a way to juice it. But I figure you didn't make it this far without a few tricks up your sleeve. This is where the fun begins. I, I don't know how many hours I was in at this point. Probably one. Um, but it doesn't tell you how you power it. And I actually did some reading. Um, I thought the solar panel might be an option. And maybe it is, I'm not sure. But I ended up going with the biofuel generator. Just because I thought it would be a sure thing. It seemed like a higher power thing. But in order to make that... Um, you need the fabricator and to make the fabricator you need circuits and for circuits you need gold, copper and lots of good stuff which we'll get into. I set up a basic uh, two by two wooden base really close to the ice wall but on the forest side and then slightly northeast of here is where those three caves are in G7 but first thing you'll need is a crafting bench, and this is where it all began in this epic 12 and a half hour playthrough. <laughs> and shortly after building my nice log cabin, a lightning storm hit. <laughs> it's gonna get loud, folks. I left this in just because uh, this just shows my luck in this game. So you could skip building a base entirely and set up your base inside a cave. I, that's actually probably recommended. One of the three caves in G7. Probably a better bet. That way you don't have to worry about your your base burning down when you're off mining materials. Things are burning. Including my base. <laughs> the minute you hear lightning, make sure to build a fire whacker. And make sure you have it researched. Uh, or you might lose your base. As you've probably, if you've played this game, you, uh, you've probably experienced this. It's the, it's the fun of Icarus. Now here I am at the first cave I ended up going in. This one I had to dig through the wall to get into. And there's the grid where I'm at. This cave was uh, pretty small though. I think this is the small one, yeah. And there's uh, cave worms in there, so uh, be prepared. If you're quick and you can uh, see their glowing heads, if you get one or two bow shots in their head, those uh, little cave worms go down pretty fast. If you get overwhelmed, just head back and uh, take them off, take them out one by one. Now this was a tiny cave, it only had iron and copper. And I don't think it had any gold, I can't remember. But it was pretty small. I think it had some platinum as well. No, just iron. So this was actually fine. Um, and now I always bring the furnace, the stone furnace, with me. That way I can do a couple of things. I can smelt while I'm mining. But the ore weighs more than the, the bars. You can also bring a mortar and pestle and, and uh, make a steel bloom, which weighs way less than iron. So just kind of a nice tip. The second cave I show you was much bigger, and that's actually where I probably would have, if I could do it all again, and for you guys, if you're watching this, I would have set my base up in that larger cave and didn't, I wouldn't have bothered with the base down by the ice wall. Ice wall. So I'm saving up, an, saving up enough iron to make an anvil so I can make a, um, an iron pickaxe to use uh, for, for mining some more iron, which I'll eventually use for steel. And the steel you'll need for the steel pickaxe and the machining bench. Yeah, 
Here I am back at base uh, making an anvil, which I'll use to make the iron pickaxe uh, to continue mining back in that smaller cave. And then we'll move on to the bigger two of three caves in that uh, G7 grid. So just around the corner from that small cave that I dug into is uh, the bigger cave where I got most of the uh, most of the metal I needed. I had to go to two other caves beyond this, uh, one slightly north of here, and then one up quite a bit further north in G5. But this one had a lot of metal, a lot of iron, a lot of pretty much everything. Platinum, making the platinum pickaxe was a bit of a challenge, but I. I made it because I wanted the extra yield. But this cave's quite big. I had to build some ramps in here to get to the, the higher spots. And I probably spent, I don't know, an, at least an hour in here mining and getting all this stuff. There's a lot of nodes in here. There are tons of iron, probably more iron than I needed. I ended up upgrading my base to a stone, stone base, uh, which was not necessary but I didn't want my wooden base to burn down while I was away so that was one of the early things I did. Quite a few cave worms in here. Quite a bit of water so that's why I built some ramps just so I wasn't wading through the water all the time. But lots of goodies in this one cave. I recommend crafting antibiotics the tier 1 and the later the tier 2 antibiotics because you'll get the pneumonia while you're in these caves and the antibiotics will help you recover. I would probably save using them until until you leave the cave unless you absolutely need them because the you can get pneumonia like seconds after you cure yourself. So I would save it. Here I am making some uh, steel bloom. Much lighter to bring the steel bloom back than to uh, bring the iron ore or iron bars even. It'll save you some uh, some carrying. Uh, but if your base is in the cave, then you don't have to worry about this. But you'll have to bring st stuff back from the other caves, so I always bring the furnace and the mortar and pestle. Both are cheap to make. They just require some stone and stuff. And then I bring them to the cave so I can smelt and bring back lighter stuff. After quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of grinding, I uh, have enough material to make the machining bench now kind of a milestone in the process. After this, you'll need to make the concrete mixer. Actually, yeah, concrete mixer to make the um, upgraded furnace, which you'll need to smelt gold and platinum and the higher end metals. I also made an ox oxygen dissolver or oxide dissolver. That way it's much easier to carry around oxygen and it's way more efficient. And then you, you uh, Keep them in the uh, leather bladders. My base got a little cramped here, but uh, once you get the concrete made, you don't need to keep the concrete mix or the cement mixer around for very long. So right after this, I headed out and got some uh, materials for making concrete, and then you can get the concrete furnace up. So get some steel going in the concrete furnace. But, uh, and then I make a steel pickaxe, which I think you need for mining some of the minerals. I'm not sure. An iron pickaxe might be good enough, but I think you need a steel pickaxe to mine aluminum, which you'll need later. And then you may or may not want to do the platinum pickaxe. I did it because I wanted the full yield when I went to go mine the gold. I did read that some people had to scour the whole map for gold. And I think it's because they didn't have the mining talent upgrade, which gives you more yield and also the high, higher end uh, pickaxe. So both are recommended. That way you can probably limit yourself to three or three or four caves for the gold. I ended up actually having spare gold, which was nice in the end. But uh, copper was kind of the limiting resource for me. And here's that tier two antibiotics, which you'll want to bring into the caves. This fully cures um, the pneumonia that you get in caves requires yeast, epoxy, and charcoal, but definitely worthwhile to bring with you to the caves. Or if you're living in caves, then you'll definitely want some of this stuff. 
I probably overdid it with the uh, the iron. You'll need quite a bit of iron, but probably not as much as I mined up. Um, I thought I was going to build the rifle, the um, but they moved the, the good rifle into tier 4, which requires some crazy materials. Um, and iron I was going to use for the bullets, but I ended up making a shotgun instead. And I actually don't recommend using it because it eats up a lot of your copper. And the copper is needed for the, the shells. And it still took me four or five shots to the head to kill a bear. So you're better off just using a bow, uh, using the running back and forth method and dodging or killing bears from your front doorstep through a door. Or any other methods you might have, like luring them into water and stuff. So if you were lucky enough to find all the platinum, which I was, you're able to make that platinum pickaxe and you, now you can finally Start getting into the juicy gold ore. Which you'll need for uh, circuits. And you'll need 60 circuits to build the fabrication bench. And I think you'll need 12 more circuits to build the bio uh, fuel generator. Which you'll need to power the laser. Uh, you'll probably be spending a lot of time in caves uh, during this mission. I don't recommend going AFK because the uh, the worms can respawn uh, while you're in the caves, and that can be deadly. But here I am, waiting for some stuff to smelt up so we can move on to the next stage. And when I got back to my base, I had a I had a visitor outside my front door, <laughs> or should I say visitors? <laughs> uh, I like how they walk in sideways. Game cracks me up. The AI is so weird. Or lack of AI, I should say. But bears go down pretty easily and they barely damage uh, stone walls. So that's the advantage of a stone base. But wait, there's more. <laughs> it's a party. <laughs> Finally smelting up that sweet, sweet, delicious gold into gold bars. Two gold ore gives you one gold bar. So you're gonna need 120 gold ore just to do uh, the 60 circuits that you need. And I make a few of them here. They also need copper, three copper per circuit, epoxy, and resin. Uh, some of the other stuff as well will require carbon fiber, which requires some aluminum. And you're going to need some aluminum for some other stuff as well later on. So once you get that platinum pickaxe, uh, you can hit those aluminum nodes. They're pretty rare, but they're they're in there, in those three caves, or four caves. Now I made the biofuel uh, composter next, just because I wanted it to be making fuel while I was getting prepared for the other stuff. I also made the can, because it was pretty cheap, just required some iron. And I expanded the base, so uh, now it's a two by three. Gives me a little bit more room to work and to place all this stuff down, because I still need to put the fabrication bench down. So I'll tuck this in the corner here. Now I made this with tree sap. Tree sap and wood. There's multiple recipes, but the tree sap and wood I find pretty easy. I also have the talent that lets me turn wood into sticks, and then you can turn the sticks into um, tree sap, so it goes pretty fast. I also took on the talent that lets you uh, chop up trees Basically, it gathers the wood, so you chop down the tree. Normally, you chop into sections, and then each section you chop into logs, and you pick the logs up. This talent just basically lets you hit the section, and then it all goes into your inventory. So it's a really great quality of life uh, talent. I highly recommend it.
here it is in action. So on a down tree, it picks up the whole section. It'll save you, save you quite a bit of time chopping wood. Here I am, just outside the third cave that I go to. I recommend the, uh, there's an interactive Icarus map if you want to know where all the cave locations are. Uh, this was kind of entertaining. There's a boar running through the flames here. But I left this part in because this bear does some pretty crazy stuff. It's like a, it's like it was birthed, uh, birthed through a tiny hole. Here he comes. Now I purposely built this tiny little entrance to my cave so that bears couldn't fit through it. But he manages to squeeze through. It's kind of hard to see, but he actually pops through that little hole and gets through. <laughs> it kills me. So later on I put up a doorway to the entrance of that cave instead. But yeah, bears can now fit through tiny little they can also scale vertical cliffs that you can't climb, so beware of the bear. Uh, he has some trouble getting back out. <laughs> uh, but he eventually makes it. He's, uh, he's, he, bears can fly. They can scale vertical cliffs. They can spawn on top of you. Good times. There he goes. Out he goes. Through the wall. And the game was trying to troll me yet again. They put some uh, stalagmites. Or stalactites were getting my way. And it wouldn't let me actually crouch down and get to this last morsel of gold. But as it turns out, I had some extra gold. So it was fine. But uh, you don't want to guess how long I spent trying to get that last hit. Anyway. This was a, a huge milestone. I think this was probably like eight or nine hours into the playthrough. Enough to make the machining bench. This was the big the big one. I'll still need uh, 12 circuits for the biofuel generator. But um, biofuel generator is much cheaper than the solar panel. I think the solar panel requires 30 circuits. And I'm not even sure if it was going to be enough power. I had to put some stuff away here though before we got the machining bench down. And then inside the machining bench, uh, you can make that biofuel generator. Let's see this bad boy. 3D printer. Sexy. Now, don't make the mistake I made. To make glass, you can just make it in the concrete furnace or cement furnace. You don't need to make the glass working bench, which I ended up making. Uh, big mistake on my part. So next up is the uh, biofuel generator. Just need a couple pieces of glass. I can print this bad boy. It'd be cool if you could see it printing, but... There she is. But wait, there's more! You need the wire connection tool as well uh, to be able to connect this generator to the actual um, laser gun thing that shoots through the ice wall. Now, I ended up building a little mini base for the biofuel generator. Then you put the full can of biofuel in there. And then you click the wiring tool and then you click the generator and then you can build short segments of wire. So you left click, and it'll automatically extend to the next one. Left click, left click, and then it'll highlight green on the laser. Click there. Then you gotta start the generator. Don't forget that. Make sure the fuel is in the fuel area, not in the inventory. That'll give you 2,500 units of power. And then you can fire this thing up. Just gotta love Group 15. 
I have to get the screenshot. And... Some friends are coming. What the? Where'd they come from? So I grab the stuff and try to hightail it out of here. Now, I thought they were going to be like the mammoth from the beta weekends, which took like some insane amount of shots uh, to kill. They're actually much easier, and I'll show you in a second how, how easy they actually are compared to that boss. Now, I just stood on my roof here for this. Stealth headshot. I think I missed the headshot. But they're they're nothing like the uh, mammoth boss from the uh, beta region. Pretty loud. I think he's destroying my home, but he only takes about four or five bow shots, and then he's he's out of there. The other two I let wander off through the forest, <laughs> and but I do take care of them later on. So here's where the quest was broken. It was supposed to give an update here when you walk into the zone past the ice wall. It's supposed to give you an update. You have to walk in a very precise location. Actually, it didn't even work at all. I had to switch the experimental branch. But I walk... There's an icon that shows up on the map way in, in the ice biome, which doesn't get triggered. So I walked all the way there and nothing happened. So I did some searching and found out that the, press, the quest was broken and that the lead developer had put out a patch on the experimental branch. So I switched branches and walked all the way back and was able to trigger the segment in the quest, which I'll show you in a sec here. Well, here we are. A whole new frozen world. It's kind of beautiful. But you ain't here to admire the view. Legos group got a theory that tectonic activity means there's more exotics in the mountains. It's about to get busy up here. So, I guess we'll find out. So, I was just at the entrance where the ice, fall, or ice wall was, but facing in towards the forest. That was the trigger point on the experimental branch that triggered that little portion of the quest, the little update. And then we run all the way north through all these wolves uh, to get to that point on the map. And there was no announcement, there was no boss, there was no nothing. All I just noticed at one point that the quest was completed when I reached that landmark. So I'm not sure if it was broken or whether they're gonna add a boss or add something, but... And then once it was completed, I ran back. But uh, along the way, there were many, many wolves, as I'll show you in a sec. So I-7 is the uh, the trigger point to finish the quest. So I just head north here and then I finally get to it and I'll show you how it updates. So you can see in the top left it says scout the area. I built a little hut here with a, a spawn point and if I just walk forward here you'll see the quest in the top left will switch to completed. There you go. No update. I didn't even notice it until like a couple of minutes later. But uh, once that changes, then you can run all the way back. And on the way back, it was raining cats and dogs, as you can see, and bunnies. Now, if you stealth headshot these guys, it's not so bad. But if you happen to anger one of them, they'll all attack at once. And then you just tr try to <laughs> Uh, take them out with your knife or bow as they approach. Pretty nasty though. I wouldn't bother harvesting them unless you absolutely need the stuff because when you harvest them they just keep respawning. And here we are, uh, running back. It was a long run back to the uh, dropship. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning when I recorded this and I just wanted to finish. So we uh, blast off a few shotgun shots here.
before we lift off. Sorry this guide was uh, pretty long, but I wanted to show all the different points and kind of get into the details why you might be having difficulty. By the time you watch this though, it might be fixed on the main branch. Hopefully. And hopefully my uh, tips will help you out. Settle, settle in the cave in uh, G7, the big cave. I think it'll save you a lot of time and then you won't have to build a stone base. Unless you want to. Uh, you have to deal with pneumonia though, but with building antibiotics it's not too bad. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you get 600 points for that mission, so is it worth it? Uh, well, you need to do it to unlock some other content. And uh, we'll be doing that. The reward said zero, but I actually did get my proper reward. <laughs> I was like so pissed off when I saw that. Um, I might do a long version of this episode of this uh, playthrough as well. This was the short version. Twelve and a half hours of footage condensed into uh, thirty-five or so minutes. I'll show you what I bought with my points because that was the most satisfying part after all that grind. It's kind of nice to have a better pickaxe early on, and the O2 tank. So I go, I go with the O2 tank, which holds, I think, more than the uh, leather bladder ones. I've already got the upgraded suit. I can't afford any, um, I don't have any exotics yet, so we get the basic pickaxe, and I make that, and then later on I might get a better pickaxe, because the higher yield early on is pretty helpful before you can make the iron pickaxe. Once I start doing exotic missions, then I'll probably get into that fancy armor in the far right. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Hope that uh, helped you out. Love to hear any uh, about your adventures in this mission in the comments. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.